Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Spotlight. Today, we're going to be going over to Willow Park, Texas, where we find 17-year-old, super late model, dirt modified, dirt late model, the list goes on and on, Caden Honeycutt. Caden, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Rod. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. Uh, so I'm not even sure where to get started with you, but let's let's just kind of jump in and tell me how you were kind of dealing with a coronavirus shutdown until we were able to actually get up and racing. Well, we had a month and a half left of school. Uh, I kind of did uh, school offline, mostly did all the classes uh, online, and that took a little while. But honestly, it was a lot better than being in the classroom, a lot much easier and uh, a lot less stressful. I can actually stay at home, get all my work, work done, then go out and shop and finish all the race cars up. So that was actually the best part about it. The only bad part was is that we didn't get to finish our baseball season. We were two weeks away from playoffs, and uh, we didn't. We unfortunately didn't get to finish that. We had a really, really solid team. We were going to go after the championship again this year, and uh, it was uh, kind of bad taste in our mouth. But we'll come back this year and do that again. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty, pretty much schools was just offline and online and uh, for a month and a half. But it was a lot better. I mean, you have to work on race cars all day. So uh, that was the best part about it. Yeah, it's kind of funny talking to the different drivers, the different ages. And, you know, of course, the all the female drivers, they were like, oh, I really miss going to school and everything. I wasn't a big fan of the virtual uh, side of school. And then the younger drivers were like, oh, yeah, I miss my friends. But all of you guys that are a little bit older, you're like, man, we love the virtual school. You know, we like to be able to get in there, get our stuff done, and then be able to go on with our day. So. Um, out of all the virtual classes that you were taking this year, was there any of those that were kind of a challenge to you? Um, I would say probably geometry was, even though math is probably one of my best subjects. I try to make it to just because of race car wise, you got to learn all the different measurements and different calculations, all the different stuff and data. Um, it's pretty hard without a teacher to, you know, to teach you something that you never really learned before. Um, fortunately, I'd be going to algebra too this year, so that would be a lot easier for me. I'd like algebra a lot better than shapes. So, uh, yeah, this, I mean, geometry and math was kind of probably the worst one I had, but uh, everything else is pretty, pretty easy. I just get through it in about a matter of 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Geometry usually took me about an hour, an hour and a half, just to make sure it was all right and I was doing it the right way. So, yeah, I'd say math and geometry was probably the hardest one out of all the subjects, and that was out of six subjects. So, yeah, it was uh, pretty difficult, but I'm happy I got through it. I got through it with an 85, so I can definitely take that a lot better than compared to the others. <laughs> right. Well, and you were right. The, the, the thing that, because you work so much on your own race cars and building your own cars and stuff, it is the math and geometry that you're going to, to have to really rely on as you kind of move forward with your career because a lot of these engineers, I mean, that's, that's where they're focused in at, are those two subject lines. So... Uh, even though you might didn't like it, uh, probably going to have to get pretty good at it. Oh, yeah. I, I, mean, I enjoy it. I really do. I like learning numbers, uh, the different types of ways to make uh, equations work or different type of uh, different type of numbers. And, you know, you're not going to ever know what you're going to have. So, I mean, data, it's all about numbers. That's what literally all racing is about. It's about numbers, what the numbers come down to. So, that's, uh, that's what you have to know is numbers. So that's a great tool to have. And of course, science and all that type of stuff that will help too. But math is probably the best important subject to have for racing. Right. Now you did a lot of simulator racing in the off season. And I know that you ran, and the first one I want to talk about is that Rowdy Energy Series that you ran. Tell us a little bit about that and how you did in that series. Well, we ended up finishing fourth in points. Uh, we got one win overall at Lucas Oil Raceway, my, one of my personal favorite racetracks. So I was really glad I got a win there. And that series was probably one of the toughest series to ever have. They had a combination of sim racers. Uh, they even had some Coke drivers in it that run professionally in iRacing. So they had really good drivers. Parker Retzloff, who ended up winning the championship. Alex McCollum, who is a real-life racer, but he does iRacing a lot, and he's really good. Uh, Devin Morgan, former uh, late mall driver, and he's a pro in iRacing. So we, and Ryan Coon, he, man, there's a lot of good drivers. Like 
there was probably no other series that could compete against that. But uh, there's probably a couple other ones that are just iRacing racing similar, like Sara and places like that. But I would say that the Rowdy Energy series was a great series to run. Uh, really good competition, and I'm very, very glad and very appreciative of uh, the opportunity to race with them uh, because I've never really driven something like that before, especially on Speed 51 broadcasts and all that. I usually do that in real life, and I don't have, I don't do that much. So I got to do that almost on a weekly basis on Saturday nights. So yeah, it's just an awesome series. We just had a really good time. I learned a bunch of stuff, uh, basically, and how others uh, race and how we race each other. And there was a lot of drivers I raced against before. So uh, hopefully, if, if we did make contact or we got into something, hopefully it didn't carry over to real life track. But I don't think I had that issue the whole the whole year, uh, the whole series. So, uh, yeah, it was just it was just awesome. I had I enjoyed it a lot. I know a lot of other people enjoyed it, and I hope people at home uh, enjoyed watching something during all this all this COVID and lockdown stuff. So, yeah, it just it was just awesome. I had such a good time. Yeah, I know. I enjoyed watching you run that series, but you're also competing. Is it called the Road to NASCAR series? It's a uh, NASCAR Road to Pro. Yeah, it's, Road to it's Pro. a series that gets you to the iRacing Coke series uh, to where they're going to have a $300,000 purse this year, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, and you got to go through a Road to Pro series, top 20 making in points, and you go to a Pro series over the winter time, and that's top 20 in points as well. So they take 40 top 20 in Coke points, top 20 in Pro series, and those 40 drivers go and compete. Uh, every two weeks, uh, starting from Daytona in February all the way till uh, September, and then the winner of the Coke Series, uh, and for example, Ryan Luza, who used to be a really, really good race car driver back in uh, a couple of years ago, and he gets to uh, go to Homestead for free and get some be in front of a bunch of people at Homestead, which will now be Phoenix this year since everything got changed. Uh, you just get free tickets and you get the presenting it in front of everybody and see who you are. People might know you if you've raced in the past, so it's a, it's great stuff. And they also got sponsorships type things uh, for racing. And uh, they're, next year they're going to have 40, all the cup teams from uh, NASCAR is going to be one of the uh, draft teams for next year instead of a mixture of road racing teams and oval teams. So uh, it's we're going to have Front Row, Spire, all those cup, uh, cup teams are going to be into uh, esports now, so that's going to be a great thing to see next year. Oh, that's cool. And I'm not. We were talking about math early. Three hundred thousand dollars is a good math number. <coughs> it's a great math number for us, <laughs> and we get to see that giant number. We're just like, whoa, that's something that we don't want to go after. You know, it's just uh, it's a great stuff, and it's going to get higher and higher. So it's 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 not going to say where it is now. I've heard that it's going to go. With, even more next year. So we'll have to see how that goes. Right. Now you also competed in the one lap challenge, which I thought was something very, very cool. Hundreds and hundreds of drivers trying for that. It got narrowed down to the top 40 and you made that top 40 list. So tell us a little bit about that lap challenge deal that you did with uh, Landon Castle, I believe. So Landon used to, did that back in 2010 for the first time. And then he did it again this year, 10 years later. It, it was at Darlington in the cup car. You got one lap. That's it. You just got one lap. You just can't mess it up. And uh, for, unfortunately, I went out for my lap. It was going to be a great lap. I thought uh, I was try I have they have the iris and they got the little tracking number so you can see what uh, what you're about to run. So I went in the middle in three and four. I just got in barely a little bit too deep and I barely scraped the fence. And with irising any type of contact on a qualifying lap does not count. Uh, we ended up. I don't know where we ended up finishing, but we didn't get a lap in, unfortunately. And there was a lot of good drivers that didn't get a lap in. Um, Eddie, Eddie Kerner, the one who won, that was actually my teammate. And he's worked on that almost a week before he uh, they officially announced it, that it was going to be happening. So I'm very happy for him. Uh, it was $10,000, man. There was... Everybody was on up on their toes and everything. Everybody was nervous. There's not probably not one person that was nervous during that. There's you can't be so. Uh, yeah, it's just it was just awesome. It was just a great experience to see that 300 drivers and 40 40 drivers make it that in the best sim racers in the world. So I'll definitely uh, 
take the experience and apply it the next time, whenever it comes, hopefully in the next year or next couple of years, hopefully not another 10 years. So yeah, no, yeah that, it's, that just, was, it's just uh, awesome. I just had such a good time. Yeah, that was an awesome deal. I really enjoyed watching it because I thought when I logged on, I thought this is going to be kind of boring. How exciting can it be watching a bunch of guys run one lap? But man, it was just the opposite. It was it was awesome. You did a great job. And, and I'm going to tell you what, even the guys that were announcing that, they were they were basically saying, you know, Caden Honeycutt's on a lap right here. He's tracking as one of the fastest laps, and and gosh, I mean, you just barely scraped the wall coming out of four. And I, I felt for you, man. I was uh, I, I was watching it and I was pulling for you. But that was a, that was a cool experience. So let's now talk about just real quick. How do you think all of this experience? that you're getting on this simulator because you're so good at it. How is this helping you carry over to the real car? I would say like uh, just the racing perspective of it, it kind of, you know, when you go out, <clears throat> when you go out and for your first time ever racing and you just don't know how to race other people like side by side, door to door with them, you can't leave a bunch of space in the corners. You got to make them pinch down. That's what I learned from my race. I learned how to race people. And I wasn't so much off on speed when I was in real life racing, but when I come down to the race and someone actually got underneath me or uh, I was trying to pass somebody, I didn't really know how to react to it. I was just really too, I was either too far up the corner or I was given too much space on the straightaway. So that's what I learned from my, I learned how to run people next to them right next to them and just run door to door with them in the corners and on the straightaways. You know, I learned how to take away the room that I was giving them and give all the, get all the room I can get. So yeah, I racing was day, a very good tool for that. Um, if you don't learn how to race, I know Josh Berry and a bunch of others guys have done that as well. So, uh, it's just a great learning tool to know how to race people. That's, that's the whole purpose of what I usually do it for is to learn how to race. Uh, I kind of have a little bit of trouble that in real life racing just because I don't do that as much in asphalt racing as I do dirt racing because that's kind of different. Dirt racing, you run all different lines. You get room. You don't have to run people all the way next to them. Asphalt racing, you have to pinch or run right next to them every single lap if when you're trying to pass. So uh, iRacing is definitely a great tool how to learn, a uh, great tool to learn for racing people. So yeah, I hope. Yeah, that, it's just it's just a great thing to use. I hope that all you young drivers that are out there watching this episode listens to what he just had to say. It's not so much about. So I, I see so many kids get on the i racing, and all they're worried about is you know what lap speed am I running, and they forget about what you just covered, and that's learning how to race, learning how to run side by side, and learning how to stay off of someone because. Again, in some of the eye racing that I've seen, it, it, they're, they're like wreck fest. And unfortunately, we actually had that with our junior late model series where we probably ran more laps under caution than we did under green. And, and it just didn't seem like everybody wanted to grasp a hold that, number one, if I'm going to have a chance to win, I got to finish first. Um, and they just, uh, they just didn't grab that. All right, so let's, uh, let's start talking about the 2020 season and let's focus a little bit on your super late model first. I know that your goal is to run all the Blizzard Series races as well as the Snowball Derby there at Five Flags Speedway. You've got two Blizzard races um, under your belt already, so let's talk about those and how those went for you. So we started off on Friday. Uh, we started, I think we started 12th and we ended up run an eighth uh, for about halfway through the race and the alternator went out during the battery and the battery died <clears throat> and the battery died. And uh, we had a really, I thought we had a really good car. I think we we're going to be fine. It just, uh, just didn't play out the way that we wanted to. And uh, on Saturday, based on the finish that you had Friday, you started, tw I started 25th and we were up to, f we got up to 15th. We were just, we were just loose all night after about 30 laps. Uh, we, our short run was pretty good. It was just like it was halfway through the race is when I started losing the rear tires, and I tried to save them the best I could, and it just just didn't have enough grip on just the right side of the car just to keep it intact. Uh, 
I just having to really drive it very carefully and, you know, just not to spin out. That's how loose it was. So um, we're just have to take and apply some more stuff when back uh, in a couple of weeks to July, uh, July 21st, uh, and then the next one will be in September. So uh, I'm really glad that they did that doubleheader, actually. It's kind of turned our head in the right direction and know where, what we got to do to be better. Um, I know in the Derby, we ran top 15, top 10 through the whole race, and and, uh, and that's a 300 lap race. So we definitely have a lot of more time in the Derby to get stuff right. But these short 100 lappers, you got to be on it uh, from the get go. So especially because you don't change tires and you're not you don't want to do adjustments during the race or you lose track position. And uh, yeah, just it did happen sometimes, but we'll take it and learn uh, and apply to July 31st and see how that goes. Yeah. And there were so many good drivers there. I mean, the competition level was just off the chart. Um, I happened to be fortunate enough to come down and spend a couple days with you during that. And um, so it was a great experience. Like I said, a lot of competitive racing. I think you guys did learn a lot. I think any time that you're able to get out and run side by side like that, at a track like that, with the quality of drivers, you've got to take something away from it every single time. But you've been kind of kicking butt on the dirt. So let's talk a little bit about your dirt modified and then we'll kind of talk a little bit about that new dirt late model that you got. So the dirt modified, we've been doing very really well and I think our worst finish so far is just been a DNF and that was uh, last Saturday. But besides the DNF, I think our worst finish has been like fourth or something like that. We haven't been, we haven't been out of the tech room. So in all of our features, but Saturday. So I definitely, it, it's very, I'm so happy that I can take a different type of race car, a different chassis, not my car, and still run as good as we are in it. And uh, it's just not the, it's not the car that I've really wanted to run with, but uh, back in my car, our average finish is probably a three or 2.5. I mean, that car is on rails and we'll actually be back in that car this weekend. Very excited about that. We got our motor back and we got that, we were ready for Sunday. And then it rained out, so that was kind of uh, a bummer. But yeah, we we've been kicking butt in that limited mod, and I've been really excited and really proud of our hard work that we put into it. And over the past four years, uh, how much we've learned and how much uh, how much knowledge that we've gained, and you know, different types of racetracks every night. So you just gotta you just gotta throw everything at it, but the kitchen sink. Basically, you're never gonna hit it perfectly, but you got to get it really close. And usually the ones that win all the time are the ones that are on it because uh, they know what it's going to be like. And that's probably, that's more one of those. And I'm very happy that we are one of those because I've learned a lot from the dirt from the last three years in that car. So, uh, yeah, it's just we've just been kicking butt and I'm very happy with it. Let's talk about that dirt late model. I know the first thing that I saw you post up online was just going out and practicing that and uh, I wish I'd have been there when you got out of the car because it sounded like that was one exciting ride and you were really pumped up about the dirt late model. Yeah, and that's not even a super. So <laughs> a super late model, I heard is uh, 10 times better. So I can't wait for that if I ever get to do it. Uh, but yeah, the crate, I had so much a good time when we uh, did practice uh, on Thursday. We were supposed to go to Kennedale Saturday for the DFW series, but we ended up going to Big O Saturday. We kind of had a mixture between supers and crates. So we had a qualifying that supers just absolutely killed us. And then we went to the features, the crates were winning the race. Uh, it's just a different type of car. I mean, when you look at, when you go and look at the car, it drives the same way that you look at it. You just up on the left rear, just staying in the gas and making a turn. Uh, that's pretty much how I took it. The first lap uh, that I went is, well, I have, I've watched it. You know, just go off in the corner and let the life reset and take off. Uh, so that it was just, it's just awesome. I, I had such a good time. It's definitely probably one of the most complicated cars that I've ever seen. There's all different types of adjustments. The shocks are always different. Um, there's different places you can put the five, there are five, there are six springs on the car. There's one in the center and there's two on the left rear. So there is definitely a ton of different stuff that you can do to that car. And uh, we ended up finishing second on Saturday, and I was so close to winning our first race. I was, I wanted it so bad. It just, it was such an awesome time, and we can't wait to go back to it uh, this Saturday at Ardmore. And Ardmore is a pretty big track, so we'll have to 
uh, I'll have to learn some different things during hot laps in the heat race for the future. But uh, it's just in our series here, there's really good competition. So I can't wait to go back again again uh, on Saturday. Well, you're not only chasing the car and that dirt, but you're also chasing the track as well. Is that not correct? Oh, yeah. You're chasing the track all the time. You constantly have to be watching it. It could go from tack down a uh, heavy racetrack to automatically dry sling. You just don't, you just never know because there's four or five different other classes that are running at the same time. So you always have to be on top of it, always have to be making adjustments throughout the night uh, every time you see something different. Uh, so that's kind of what hurt me. Uh, actually, Wednesday last week, I kind of thought the track would have went one direction, but it actually ended up uh, in a different one uh, you know, in our limited mod that we finished third in. And uh, I kind of over adjust a little bit, but it's just ha it just happens sometimes. You just have to stay on top of it all all the time, and that's the ones that always run up front and always win is the people that watch. Yeah. So, kind of looking at the rest of 2020, do you have any other plans that maybe we don't know anything about yet? Well, um, not really. I've, I mean, the super late model. I want to run all Blizzard races in the snowball. But I want to mix in one more in October at Gresham. Uh, I've heard that Gresham is probably one of the coolest tracks that you'll go to. And uh, I would definitely be up for grabs for Gresham if I ever got, if we get to. And, and I'm gonna, I'm working very hard to try to find uh, Jeff Foltz and Fairy Race cars. And I'm trying to uh, work with them and see if we can work something out to run their house car this year uh, for the rest of the Blizzard races and uh, Snowball and Gresham, if we are able to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely want to mix in Gresham with all the rest of the Blizzard races and Five Flags and uh, been mod, doing dirt mod and uh, crate late mod racing for the rest of the year. Uh, as long as I'm not asphalt racing, I'll be on the dirt. So uh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing really changed, but adding one more race in the super late mod schedule that I want to do, but that's about, about it. Let's talk a little bit about Caden off the track. So tell us something that most people wouldn't know about you. We know that you're quite the athlete. Well, you played you played I football, do, yeah. you played baseball. Um, you just told me right before the show that you're thinking about running track. But tell us something that maybe most people wouldn't know. Well, uh, the only diff I think the big difference now nowadays is I work on my own stuff. I build my own cars and work. On my own setups and uh i'm i do i racing setups uh mostly off track uh i would say that probably 90 percent of the time that i'm not working on race cars i'm out at the football field and working out and getting ready for this year uh from the guys that we worked with uh last year we got through one round of the playoffs and we didn't get through any more after that so we're, we're working really hard to get past that first round and get back to the uh, state championship that we want to be in. So I'm either, if I'm not working on race cars, I'm going out, working out, and uh, going with the guys and playing football. And uh, probably this year, I'll probably end up playing football and maybe basketball, I haven't decided yet, and track. So I'll have to see on how that works out. But I'm mostly an athlete uh, all around. Uh, there's not much really to me. I'm kind of basic, but um, yeah, I'm just a race car driver and that loves to play different types of sports. But racing is my main sport, so, so what I work out hard at it every day. What, what position do you play in football? I play uh, D-line, and then this year I'm going to be uh, free safety. Uh, they kind of moved me in the back a little bit for pass rush coverage, so uh, I'll have to see how that goes. I'm basically, I'm basically an all-time defense, dude. I love defense, offense stuff, you punch all different type of plays in my head, and yay, this guy goes this way, this guy goes the other way. I'm just like, what do I do? Tell me what I got to do. I don't I don't care about what they do. I just need to know what I need to do. Get the guy and that's, that's the whole the thing ball. in offense. You got to know what everybody else is doing. Yeah, you just need to worry about getting the guy that's got the ball. Yeah, you just worry, get the ball and go get in the end zone. What do, there's nothing else to do. Just tell me what to do and who to block, you know. Uh, so I was I was a running back last year, and offense uh, part time. I didn't I won the full time. Uh, we mostly switched out. Me and my buddy Ty switched out um, uh, every other play, and uh, we got a lot of touchdowns and we got scored a lot. So we had a very uh, amount of success. So we got some new players this year. We're gonna have some new people 
uh, different types of stuff that we're going to be going through that we got to figure out. So I'm basically an all-time defense dude, and that's what I like. So I won't have to worry about plays too much. Yeah, and, and in the state of Texas, I know they don't take football very seriously there. So. Uh... Oh, well, I don't know. Alito <laughs> is uh, probably one of uh, – I would say Alito and Allen are probably the two – most hype football teams in, in the country, I would say. Uh, I don't, they haven't lost a championship in probably 10 years. So uh, football in Texas is probably their main the, – football in Texas is absolutely their main sport. It's like so, a religion. Especially for their college teams. It's like a religion in Texas is football. So. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, we're, we're, we're just about out yeah. of time. Do you want to give a shout-out to the people that actually make all this happen for you? Uh, I want to thank you guys, uh, Race Face, uh, you, Rob, personally. Thank you so much for what you've done for me. Uh, I also want to thank my mom and dad for all their support. Reality Roofing, Shelia White, that helps us with our dirt cars uh, for our sponsorship for our Dirt Modified. Also, uh, Chris Kyle Frog Foundation, if you want to go to their website, uh, go to chriskylefrogfoundation.com, go order your shirts, and look up what they do. It is absolutely amazing. They help out military people. Uh, news, what's happened to Chris was an absolute tragic thing. Hopefully we can get, we've gotten through it. Now we're just going to help out other people to make sure it doesn't happen to them, to make sure their families are connected. And uh, yeah, just thank, thank everybody. Thanks to my family. Thanks to my friend's family and everybody that's helped me throughout my racing career. And hopefully we can get through many more years to come. So we'll just have to see how everything goes. Hopefully the next couple next couple months and next couple of years is going to uh, go the way that we need it to. All right. Well, Caden, thanks so much for being with us. And if you guys have not connected with Caden yet, make sure to go to CadenHoneycutRacing.com. Make sure to go to the Fan Zone. Follow him on all of his different social media platforms. Register for his digital newsletter. And Caden, again, thanks for being with us tonight. We're going to have you back again here in just a couple of months. So good luck this weekend and good luck for the rest of the season. And remember, if you're out there and you've missed any of our episodes, you can go to raceface.tv and get caught up on demand. That's raceface.tv. Go out, follow your favorite Raceface drivers. Again, thanks for tuning in with us tonight on Raceface Spotlight. My name is Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.